is up everybody and welcome back to another Madden 23 online CFM game. We are now in week 17 of the 2022 season here in the Premier Madden League. Our New York Giants still sit in first place in the NFC East Division with two weeks to go in the regular season. After a big win against the Minnesota Vikings, our Giants are still the fourth seed in the NFC. And the Vikings, believe it or not, at a 9-6 record, they're sitting outside the playoff picture. Check out how insane the battle is in the middle of the NFC Conference. There are so many teams vying for so few spots. At the top, a number of teams have already clinched a spot, but our New York Giants are absolutely in the scrum. We're in risk of not winning the division with the Commanders still hot on our heels. And of course, with all those teams right behind us, if we don't win the division, if we don't win out in this regular season, then there's a chance that there's not even a playoff spot left for us if we're trying to rely on wildcard positioning. So trying to beat the Indianapolis Colts is obviously paramount today in our chances of making the playoffs. Indianapolis has not won much this year. That's the good news. The not so great news, if you want to call it that, is the fact that the Colts lost most of these games under a previous regime. They got a new owner last week and in his first game in the league, he won. So technically, the Colts, we have to take them as a team that is 1-0, that we don't really have much of a playbook on, besides this one game that they played against a Chargers team that also has about three or four wins this year. So, yeah, there's really not much to take away from that, but we'll just have to respect the Colts. They have Jonathan Taylor. We got to keep number 28 in check all day long, and... Hopefully we can get the Colts thinking about more about draft positioning than winning this ball game today to help us get a victory. Of course, no Saquon Barkley. He is still out with that injury from the Sims, so we still got to write Matt Breida. Matt Breida had a wonderful game last week. Can he make it happen twice? I doubt it, but let's see. We are underway here at MetLife Stadium on the penultimate week of the regular season. The Giants will start off and start off with Kadarius Toney. Of course, our New York Giants have still only lost one game this year when Kadarius Toney plays. It's a funny stat, but also a true stat. Second down to nine, Matt Breida outside. Oh, trying to make the move back in. Julian Blackman was able to contain it the whole way through. Third down already as we are dropping back with Jones, given the time and getting Darius Slayton, who is able to get the first down. Up the middle and... Running might not be too easy today because the Colts, they do have a pretty good front seven with the likes of Shaq Leonard, DeForest Buckner, all up front, Bobby O'Kerrike, third down once again, Jones, oh man, I mean DeForest Buckner is pretty good, but... I mean, he's really good when no one blocks him, <laughs> and that's exactly what happened there. Never afforded the time to make the play, and we have to punt after our opening drive. As the rookie Alec Pierce getting the catch right there off the RPO. We got a nice punt out of Jamie Gillian, so the Scottish Hammer pins the Colts deep in their own territory. No Quinn Nelson for this third down. That's pretty big. That superstar left guard sitting on the bench. They still go to the left side and get an easy first down with Jonathan Taylor. And now Eric Fisher, the left tackle, is not on on the field so the entire left side of the Colts missing in action for this play as they try to go RPO and Carter Coughlin able to shut that down wow look at that quick pressure that's Aziz Ajumori and of course that's the backup left tackle that gave up the pressure now Fisher back in for third down Oh, but it doesn't really matter when Matt Ryan is missing the mark. There might have been a chance to get some rack yards to get that first down, but we'll never know because Matty Ice sailed it, and the Colts punt it right back to us, and that's all right. You know, we've gotten into a couple of these games where it ends up being a punt fest more than anything else, and more often than not, we actually come out on top in those ball games over the top of the defense. Kadarius Tony a bust in the coverage, and KT's in for six. Whoa, just like that. We got points on the board. Hey, all right. I mean, in a game where defense might be the deciding factor, the Colts giving up a one-point touchdown or a two-point touchdown like that. We'll take it as Paris Campbell able to fall forward for a gain of eight. That's great effort. Second down, Ryan. 
not setting his feet right there. I kind of fall off the back foot and ends up going out of bounds. Third down. They go RPO and it's swatted. That's a Dory Jackson who makes the play. They're looking for Mo Alley Cox. And the Colts will have to punt it right back to our New York Giants. And a Dory Jackson now on as our punt returner. This is something we've been doing the past couple of weeks. A Dory Jackson as punt returner. And also a Dory Jackson as our slot corner. I don't know about the punt returner thing, but the slot corner, I think that that experiment's working out all right with Adore Jackson. I kind of like it, so we just left them there. Third down and 11, we're not really able to run the ball right now, clearly, as we drop back with Daniel Jones. Just going to throw a jump ball for Galladay! But we never really even had a chance. Galladay never located the football right there. Awkward-looking play, and we have to punt it away. So, yeah, running the ball might not be too easy today. And on third down, whoa! First of all, on first down here, Jonathan Taylor fumbles the ball. That might have not been a fumble. We'll never know. They'll just pick it right back up, play another down, and down goes Matt Ryan. Tibbs got dibs on the quarterback. And right now, Matt Ryan's inability to move in the pocket, statuesque. Not working out too well. And on top of that, Matt Ryan's not even hitting on his throws. So I think Indianapolis, they'll be looking forward to uh, getting a quarterback in a draft, I would assume, as Adore Jackson trying to help their draft positioning by getting a solid return. Jackson beating Nelson outside and all the way to the 26. Well, I guess that Adore Jackson punt return thing is not working out too bad either. If he's making plays like that as Matt Breida gets his best run. And backward he goes. Once again, I believe that was Tyquan Lewis who brought him down in the backfield. Third down, Daniel Jones yet again asked to make a play. He can't do it with his legs, but he'll do it running outside and tossing it to Daniel Bellinger. The damn Daniel connection as we go with Matt Breida on second down. Breida got away, and he's in for the touchdown. Matt Breida outside and Matt Breida he does have 93 speed that's the main strength he brings to this team even though he's actually been a better than expected inside the tackle runner throughout this season but outside that's mainly where Matt Breida would shine and there you see it he's able to get the edge defender takes a bad angle and Matt Breida takes advantage untouched as the Colts return into their own 17 yard line Matt Ryan even when he's throwing completions it just looks awkward when he's letting go of that ball he does not look comfortable in that pocket Dexter Lawrence might be part of the reason why. Sexy Dexy bringing down Jonathan Taylor in the backfield. Oh, and Dory Jackson. Great swap, but that could have been a crib call. Still an incomplete pass. Third down, they go screen. And John, no, that's Naheem Hines into the game. Hines, did he get the first down? No. Well, that was a bad angle, but at least we didn't give up the first down. And on fourth down in inches, Colts on the field. They're going for it, and they're not going to get it. They are not going to get it. Not even close. Oh, they went with the fullback dive, and that might be a situation where they overthought it because, I mean, you got Jonathan Taylor, and you're going to go fullback dive. Oh, Matt Breida, look at him go once again. Matt Breida has become an overnight sensation in the Big Apple. He's got another touchdown on his resume. Wow, I mean, Matt Breida, all right. I mean, look, I'm, I'm all right with Matt Breida doing all this. This is cool. I mean, no Saquon Barkley. Did we expect this? No, but it's happening. Matt Breida is pulling off some of these unorthodox plays, and I don't know, man, he's like Houdini out there. Defenders just seem to miss with Matt Breida. He just seems to break off the first tackle attempt sometimes and plays better than his overall. Once again, fine by me as that's a rubber ducky that's intercepted by Fabian Moreau as the Colts are suddenly collapsing in this second quarter. Moreau with a solid return. Nearly got us into the red zone and I mean, yeah, we're just going to keep on going to Matt Breida. He's getting stronger as the game goes on as we go to Kadarius Tony, Can he get the first? No cross. Able to blast him a yard short. Third down. Out the spread. We give it to Breida. Got the first. Blocking is great and Breida untouched again. He's got a hat trick in the first half, which, I mean, my goodness, who would have seen that coming? And this game that looked like it was going to be a slugfest, it was just going to be a low-scoring kind of ball game. All of a sudden, our Giants are up 28-0, to and this is easily one of our, our most, if not our most dominant half of any game in this season. And a uh, great time for it to happen as we're trying to, like we said in the opener, make the Colts think hey man we lose this game our draft pick will be better and you know 
don't worry about this one, right? Like, we lost it. Oh, well. And we don't want them fighting back from down 28 as we have the third down run. And Taylor in short yardage. He's denied. Short yardage. Our defense is stout. Dexter Lawrence inside getting the stop. And the Colts, they are just going to say screw it. We'll go for it. They'll actually drop back the pass here. And Matt Ryan will complete it. Quick slant gets them the first down to Campbell. And they are actually that afraid of our front that the Colts ran it on fourth down or pass it on fourth down in inches. So uh, that's going to work in our favor down the road. Plus, they are down 28 to 0 as they go to Jonathan Taylor. I foolishly try to get the user pick right there out of position. And that's actually going to allow Jonathan Taylor to get the first down here as the Colts called their first of three timeouts in this half with just over a minute to go. Outside, Pierce not able to get out. Good tackle by Adore Jackson. No timeout by Indianapolis. Now, just over 30 seconds to go and that's going to be Aaron Robinson making the tackle in bounds so the Colts trying to go sideline but just not able to get out of bounds as they put a man in motion that's Campbell on third down Belton not able to make the play but Ajulori cleans up the mess and the Colts after a couple of seconds called their final timeout of this half oh no but that is an absolute shank apotamus appearing at MetLife no good Rodrigo Blankenship I mean, that was almost in danger of hitting fans in the stands if it wasn't so short. As we have a run, Matt Breida with just under 10 seconds to go, trying to get us in field goal range. And this should be field goal range for Graham Gano as we have one timeout left. We'll try to get a couple of yards, if not a shot down field. There's the yards, maybe a lot more. Ooh, eyes might have lit up bright right there, but we put Graham Gano on the field with two seconds to go. Whoa, he overshot it. Field goal is good by Graham Gano, but that was scary. It got the animation, but he just, I don't know. He just overshot it. Those, those field goal blocks are weird sometimes, especially when you're coming off the edge as far as trying to time it right once you get the animation. Thankfully, he didn't get it because, I mean, the last thing we wanted to see was him getting points after we shut him out in the first half off of something like that. But instead, we get ourselves 31 points to the Colts' is zero as we start the second half. Indianapolis has the ball, but, I mean, they got Mount Everest to climb right now. Third down and one. Oh, Tony, or sorry, Thibodeau had him, and Naeem Hines is able to break him off and get the first down, and, yeah, those tackle battles. Shout out to Madden for their tackle battles, and shout out to Matt Ryan for just not showing up for this ball game. And this, this has been a pretty pitiful performance from Matt Ryan is, uh, Michael Pittman able to go out of bounds and lose about two yards. It's third down and long. Matt Ryan dropping back and intercepted. Oh, my. Jaquiski Tart with the INT. And Jaquiski Tart, he, I believe, is second on our team in interceptions at this point of the season. It's hard to keep track of interception numbers with all the sim games we had and disconnects as we have a third down drop back daniel jones against the three-man rush afforded all the time in the world and eventually kenny galladay shakes free but yeah i believe you know back to that point it's hard to keep up with all that sim stuff but i believe uh Jaquiski tart is up there and then uh dane belton is number one even though he's really only played the half season for our team right he didn't start he didn't really see any snaps in the first seven weeks of the season until we traded our safeties as Matt Breida riding to the two-yard line we put Breida in motion and Ty Johnson's gonna get the touchdown that same play worked last week for a touchdown in the red zone and it works again and Ty Johnson he's able to score both the touchdowns and that denies Matt Brito a four touchdown in the ball game, but that's all right. We'll, sh we'll share the sugar a little bit and do a little running back by committee and get ourselves a further lead in this ball game. And this is just an absolute blow right now. So this should put us in, you know, good position to make playoffs, but it's no guarantee, right? Like we win this game as long as the commanders also win. There is no, like we still have to win in week 18 to win the division essentially like we cannot clinch the nfc east with a win today because even though we split the season series with the commanders our division record if we lose in week 18 and the commanders win they would have a better division record than us and that would thus break the tie break as moali cox try to get a jump ball to him over micah mcfadden and uh, McFadden in pass coverage is a little scary out there. He gave up that big touchdown. Speaking of the Commanders, in that Commanders game, the Johnu Smith, it seems like, you know, even with li our, uh, our linebacker against tight ends, like, Michael McFadden is just a liability out there. He's got to do whatever we can as Moali Cox. But that was not Michael McFadden. That was just wide open right there in the zone coverage. And Matt Ryan trying to get these boys into the end zone. And Jonathan Taylor able to punch it in. And that will help the Colts avoid the shutout. But that's about all that really accomplishes as we get the PAT up and good by Rodrigo Blankenship. But a 31-point lead, as you guys know, at Blah Rules. Uh, it's time for us to sub out the starters. And uh, oddly enough, that means we have to sub out Matt Breida. 
right? Like, <laughs> I never thought I would. We, I mean, sure, man. Matt Breida, no more football for you. You've been doing too good. Ty Johnson, Ty the uh, garbage time guy, right? He's returning in that role for us. You know, usually in these series, I try not to bring back too many old faces, but every once in a while, you know, I, I see a guy in free agency, and I see the other guys kind of suck, and I'm like, you know, Ty Johnson, you did good for us before. Let's see what you can do right now. And this Giants team has a couple of these guys that we've had in the past, which I guess will happen if you do this CFM series for a number of years. This is now year four. We're doing a, a CFM in this uh, league especially as uh, Taylor getting the run out here so yeah we have guys like uh, Colin Johnson is technically on this Giants team as we get the user pick with a Dory Jackson that's one reason I like having a Dory Jackson in the slot oh a Dory Jackson look at him go he will crib it Jackson touchdown so, I like Adore Jackson in the slot because I like using Adore Jackson as a slot cornerback because he has such great physical stats. His change of direction, he has 93 speed, like 95, I think, acceleration. I think it's like 96 change of direction. It's pretty crazy physicals. And especially having that as a slot cornerback helps out a lot, I feel like, in your coverage. And also just using him, trying to make those swift movements in the middle of the field. We have a forced fumble and a recovery. The defense is going off right now. Oh, Tibbs! He's got dibs on the football, and he's taking it for six. Cave on Thibodeau with another touchdown in his rookie campaign. Thibodeau, you know, he used to say that he would be going to Honolulu for the Pro Bowl. I don't really, I guess they go to Las Vegas for the Pro Bowl now. I have no idea where they play. I, I I don't know if anybody cares. I don't. I don't even think they play a Pro Bowl this year, man. I think they're just they're doing like skill challenges and flag football this year. So I mean, he's still going to Vegas for Pro Bowl week, we'll call it, right? So yeah, Kevon Thibodeau. He's had a sensational rookie year, and we are now up 52 to seven. By the way, this is easily the biggest blowout we've been in this year. Most of our games are, you know, just reliant on us being able to run the ball well enough to play keep away and just hang on for a victory but uh today we were able to dominate this colts team i don't really think they were prepared for uh how desperate we were for a win i think we were just two teams on two different crash courses right the colts they just played like a three-win charger team in their first game in the league and were able to squeak out a win and they were really sure what to expect. We are fighting for a playoff chance. So we were coming out try hard pretty much, right? Or as try hard as it gets. I don't I don't really play Madden that try hard nowadays, right? Like I just load up and play these franchise games, and that's about it. But we can still do okay, right? We're not completely trash by any means. We're able to get our now 11th win on the year with the New York Giants as we get our second interception in the game, which a Quisky Tart, and that will do it for this ball game. We'll just kneel it out here and call a game. So I forgot what I was talking about before, but oh yeah, we're just talking about Thibodeau and Pro Bowls. <laughs> absolutely nothing, man. We're talking about absolutely nothing, but that does wrap it up, and um, you got to hold your breath after games like this in franchise because it's like, man, I really hope this game saves. It would really suck at this one didn't save because a lot of guys had good ball games but thankfully it did save so we'll we'll take solace in that um daniel jones didn't do a lot only passed the ball 10 times but that's all we want from daniel jones we don't want and all of those are on third downs too we don't really want daniel jones doing much if we can win the game without daniel jones really doing anything that's ideal. How many games can you win like that? Not a lot, but we've been working that formula pretty well this year. You know, especially Madden 23 is more of a defensive-oriented Madden. Just making less mistakes than the opponent will get you a win more than it really should. And it's gotten us a win 11 times this year. So, yeah, that's really helped us exceed expectations with our New York Giants. And um, I can confirm after this game, based on the record of the other teams after we played this game, that we actually did clinch our playoff spot with that win against the Indianapolis Colts because we're at 11 wins and... Um, the eighth seed in the NFC, which is the likes of Lions, Vikings, and Cowboys, none of them can get to that 11-win mark. So even though we still don't have the division clinch because you guys see the Commanders did win in Week 17, so there's still a game back behind us, we have clinched at least a playoff spot. So, you know, and we're going to either be the four seed or a wild card. I don't know what wild card position we would be, but if we do win the division, it's looking like we're going to be the four seed based on the way the top three teams in the league are. But we made the playoffs, and that's the most important part. We had no expectations for that and you know we 
I, I was hoping we would have a chance, especially at the beginning of the season. It was like, all right, we, we could do this. Preseason, I was like, yeah, I don't really know. But I, after like the first game or two, I was like, oh, hold on a second. We can actually make the playoffs with this team. Like, this team is not that bad. And um, it was just about, like I said, just playing smarter. And I guess that's the formula that works for us. And we'll just continue to try to ride that as long as we can. So leave a like in the video if you guys enjoyed what you guys saw today. Subscribe for more Madden 23 gameplay. GG's to the Colts. And I will catch you guys next time. Thank you, as always, for watching.